Anything Nationals campaigning on at the moment that would be a deal breaker for you guys then, that you'd say no, we won't, we would never join a, um, a, a government led by this if um, they are doing this particular policy or is it all yeah. negotiable for the Greens? It's kind of, it's kind of a bit tricky for, for me to answer that because, because our decisions are made by consensus of the party, individuals sure. will, you know, will have their own personal bottom yeah. lines. And so do you have any personal and bottom lines about what National are campaigning on? But you would say no. I wouldn't. I wouldn't become minister of conservation if they make you know DPB people do this, or yeah, if they make yeah. um, cut. Yeah. Or they want to. They want or, to like push back the agricultural thing in, ETS, in the ETS, for example. Is yeah. there any bottom lines you'd have? Uh, um, I, I would say not on any individual policy. Um, but the I mean, so I, so I actually do try to take a. a you know, fully integrated view that actually says, okay, so, 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 um, there are some really bad things that they want to do, mm. um, but on the other hand, here's a here's a lot of really good things we've been mm. able to, to negotiate wins on. So, and I think, um, I mean, for for me, I try not to make any in, in individual policy um, a, a deal breaker. I, I prefer to try and take an integrated view, so it's a holistic view. Um, and the, the fact is that the, the party chose at the, the general meeting to to not insert specific bo bottom lines, to, to actually give some some flexibility. And remember, this is not only about negotiation with National. A much more likely situation is negotiation mm. with Labour as okay. well. You know, it's the same. More likely in the sense that you're closer to Labour and more w be more well, willing to go into a. We're, 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 we're car cl closer to Labour with every day as, yeah. as, as they adopt but more less, of our policies but less they rejected when they're in government. But, yeah. <laughs> but, but less likely in the terms of how the polls are looking at the moment in terms of any chance of Labour mm. forming a government. I, you know, I, I'm, I, I know a lot of people are pessimistic about that. I'm, I am not so pessimistic. Um, and um, one of one of my reasons for saying that is, um, I, I do think that a lot of that John Key support is pretty soft. Yep. Um, and I also think that that the the future, to a very high degree, is in the hands of young people. You know that actually young people can influence the outcome of this of mm. this election. And so that's why we're placing such an emphasis on trying to get young people enrolled. Because that's, and, and voting. that's been a big part of the Greens' problem in previous elections, hasn't it? That you've had high opinion poll, you know, ratings, but then come election day, the youth just don't get out and vote. Is that yeah, I, mean, I, I, I don't know that for sure, but yeah. that's that's a very strong, um, that's a, a very strong stream of thought that we have. That it, well, I mean, we know from 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 polling that's that's looked at age banding, mm. you know, that our support amongst young people is in fact, you know. Much higher than disproportionately, yes, yeah, significantly. Um, but yeah. we also know that that's the that's the group. You know, it's it's a minority of young people who are actually even enrolled. That's know, right. At this, at this election, so, so that must if, horrify the Greens. Yeah. Um, so so if that person is answering a pollster saying, "Yeah, I really like <laughs> the Greens," but actually they're not enrolled. Yeah. Well, actually, you know, we, so we we need we need to, and it, look, I don't blame young people at all for this because I think we we largely have. Um, a, a system that, that treats young people as if they were simply consumers um, and, um, and economic units rather than encouraging young people to become engaged with politics. I mean, probably the, the people that in your department or that are probably watching this actually are very much a biased sample of young people of course. Um, because they're engaged in, in political issues. Yeah. But a lot of young people have gone through a schooling that, that you know, doesn't have a you know, civics education or, or any kind of mm. process that's encouraging them to become engaged in politics. Mm. So we have a very depoliticised society at the moment. We do, we do. Now, and, and how, how's it going on Twitter? Sorry to interrupt. Um, um, there's a question on Twitter saying, what, what, what is the first thing that you would like to see a new government do? So what would be like your first policy that you'd like? And you can be, you can be dreamy and idealistic. <laughs> you don't have to be uh, <laughs> too pragmatic. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, I, I mean, from my portfolios, I guess the, the first thing I'd like to see happen is reinstatement of conservation funding, because um, that's, that's one of the areas in which our unique nat natural heritage for our kids and our grandkids is being uh, savaged, in fact, before our eyes by, by a government that has, in fact, chosen to put 
400 million more money than is spent on the entirety of conservation into its new irrigation fund, which will further degrade that, that, that uh, natural heritage, while at the same time slashing conservation funding and, uh, and ripping out incredibly important conservation jobs. You know, so that's, a, that's a, a permanent loss of capability that is occurring right now. And so, so that, to me, that's incredibly important. So that would be your first sort of item of agenda if you were Minister of Conservation? Yeah. If, I, presu if, I presume if, that's the sort of role that you would want in a government, should you be invited? Uh, I mean, I, of, of course. I mean, any politician that says that they're, they're not interested in having the, the kind of ability to influence outcomes that a, a ministerial role would, would provide is uh, probably in the wrong job, actually, you know. Um, but the, I mean, I, I, I also have my head screwed on about um, taking on a ministerial role under the wrong circumstances. So I, I certainly would be um, interested in a ministerial role only to the, to the extent that it enabled long-term change. I'm not interested in something that actually um, saps power. And I think you've probably heard the chair talking a lot about this issue for. Uh, for uh, coalition partners of large parties actually finding it pretty hard mm. to, to survive through that. And I think that's largely because a lot of energy gets taken up mm. in, that, in that coalition relationship and, um, uh, uh, and, and so, the, so the person is, is, high, is, is hamstrung by, by the arrangement. So I, th you know, I think it's important to ensure that, that uh, we would be able to continue to act independently as well as uh, taking on the ministerial role. But that does seem to be how things are evolving constitutionally in a sense of having ministers outside of cabinet who can speak independently on issues outside their portfolio and, and that differ from the, yeah. the, I mean, the I think, government. I mean, we, we did that in a way um, in the, the last term of, of yeah. the Labour government mm -hmm. where both Jeanette Fitzsimons and, um, and Sue Bradford yeah. had, I guess, quasi-ministerial mm. responsibilities, certainly executive mm. responsibilities, but, um, but maintaining entirely our independence. Mm. So that's, I mean, that, I mean, that is kind of one of the ways that that's happened. I think it's one of the positive contributions that the Greens have made during the MMP era is that we, we have found ways of, of, of working with mm. In fact, governments of both stripes, and I would say without compromising our integrity in, in the process. Okay. Any more questions? Oh, there's a question in the front here. Kevin, in light of your credentials, there is the potential you could be an associate health minister. Associate? <laughs> <laughs> what would the Greens bring to the health portfolio, and particularly primary care, prevention, and yeah. obesity management of the obesity pandemic that's upon us, yeah. considering yeah. you've just mentioned you're interested in that long term outcomes? Well, I mean, we, we have an extremely um, strong perspective that, that says. The point of intervention, if you imagine a, a continuum of health services with public health, prevention and primary care at one end and, and very highly specialised services at the other end, the point of intervention absolutely has got to be at this public health and primary care end. And yet this government is taking health in the other direction. Actually, it's, it's, I mean, it's great that more people are getting elective surgery, but that's happening by taking money out of public health and primary care. And, and our unique perspective, I guess, is a lot of specialised expertise around that end of things, around the public health. And I guess the understanding of the links between a person's health status and other sectors. You know, so the links between health, education, um, social welfare, and, and, it, and everything else, in fact. So the need to, to work across sectors to try and improve health gain. Anything specifically you thought you would do to manage the obesity pandemic? Well, I mean, some of the first things, of course, are reversing some of the bad, the bad changes that National has made. You know, so it's it's a totally arbitrary and sort of dog whistle um, policy of uh, withdrawing the regulations around the type of food that schools sell, for example, or is available in schools, 
is one of the things that has to change. We are in favour of, of, uh, of progressively moving to 10% of the health budget being spent in public health measures to keep people well. Um, and uh, clearly we, we've got a, a range of policies around um, taxation on, on, on foods that are bad for people's health, on, on food labelling to ensure that people know more clearly what they're eating because the evidence is people cannot interpret the information that's on the labels currently, um, as well as those, those policies that are about influencing the, 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 the social environment. So, for example, we would say that our policy around lifting 100,000 kids out of poverty actually will make a substantial difference to their, to their nutrition and to their health outcomes associated with nutrition. On Twitter, uh, we've got a few things. I think it's I think Holly Walker, one of your Green Party candidate colleagues, has, has said that she's now watching. So hello to Holly Walker. Hi, Holly. <laughs> <laughs> um, and someone else has asked, um, could you see the Greens working with ACT on any issues? I mean, I think this is uh, it's kind of an interesting question mm. because actually, I, I think it perhaps underlies something that's fundamentally different about the Greens from other political parties. That, um, and it comes down to that, that appropriate decision-making principle. You know, I think if you, if you look at what fed that decision from our AGM about not closing the door, I know, as one of the MPs that, that actually sort of led the consultation around the country around this, that one of the reasons for that, for that position was that people felt really uncomfortable about the idea of saying of, of closing the door and saying we're just not going to talk to the, that you know that set of people who have different ideas from us because it's kind of fundamental to Green Party thinking that actually if someone has a different view from me that doesn't mean that severs our relationship right. it means actually we need to try and find ways of exploring the areas of difference and trying to find areas of common ground sure so. That same applies not only to national but also to ACT. And in fact, over the years, it was interesting in Keith Locke's valedictory and some of the comments from ACT people mm. um, about that, that, um, that they respected Keith's uh, willingness to engage with, with ACT and in, indeed on some issues, uh, particularly in the civil liberties kind of area, mm. actually it's ACT that we have worked with. Yeah. Well, um, not all issues.